Hi, welcome to Muddy Mongoose Channel. Today I'm going to list my five favourite trails that I've been on so far. This is purely subjective. These are just my five favourites. You may have lots of different ones. I'm sure you do. <laughs> but these are mine and I'm going to explain why I like them so much. It's been very hard coming up with the five because there's so many good trails that I've been on, but here they are. Let's start with number five. And number five, it's Vindaloo, a fantastic trail up at Ballow Hill just outside Dundee. Ballow is a great place to go riding, I thoroughly recommend it. It's the home of the spicy trails. Lots of the trails are named after curries and it's well deserved because the trails really are spicy. I was lucky the day that I went there, I've only been there once, it was perfect conditions um, but I'm led to believe that it's quite often really wet and muddy so that would make it so much harder. There's a lot of routes, it's very steep in parts. It doesn't really show up because of the GoPro effect on these videos but some of it is really steep. Um, but Vindaloo was just about manageable for me. The reason why I liked Vindaloo so much was it had a good mix of features. There was obviously rocky sections, roots, there was some tricky off-camber turns on really sort of steep terrain but it also had nice flowing berm sections as well so it mixed it up so it wasn't relentlessly just steep and difficult you had bits where you could just relax a bit and flow and then you go into another tricky part as with a lot of the trails at Ballow there's a lot of line choice in them and there's different ways you can sort of finish the trails as well so we went down this ending which had a sort of rocky slab descent which was quite tricky but it was great fun just all in all top-notch trail really well built I thoroughly recommend it but as I say the whole of Ballow is brilliant but of all the trails I rode at Ballow that was my favourite And number four, it's Berm Baby Berm at Glen Trace. These berms are so cool. Berm Baby Berm is a blue trail and if you like flowing trails it really doesn't get much better than this. It's ideal if you're a beginner, there's nothing scary on it at all, there's no roots or big rocks or anything like that to contend with, it's just pure flowing fun. Even if you are an experienced mountain biker, there's still lots of fun to be had because it's just so flowy. Whenever I go to Glentress, I usually use Berm Baby Berm as a warm up run and also as a wind down run at the end of the day. The surface is hard packed gravel which provides plenty of grip and the berms are so beautifully sculpted offers you lots of support when you're flowing around the trail it really is a brilliantly laid out, well thought out trail. Just simply one of my favourite trails for pure enjoyment, pure fun. If you haven't done it already, check it out, give it a go. It really is a fantastic example of what a good bike park blue run should be. That's such a great trail. And number three. It's Flat White at the Golfy at Tenerleaton. Flat White is a black graded trail. It was a trail that had been on my bucket list, so to speak, after seeing lots of videos of it on YouTube. And it really is one of those trails that when you see videos of it, it does not do it justice. The GoPro effect is really in effect on this one. Even when you're going down the trail, it's hard to get a feeling of just how steep the hill is because the walls of the trail are quite high, so you feel like you're actually going almost down like a tunnel of berms. The top section is a lot of berms and there's a few decent sized step down sort of drops as you're going down. Hey. It's 
every so often the hill will drop away from you but as I've mentioned because you can't really tell how steep it is you're not really expecting it but suddenly your bike will pick up a lot of speed which makes you want to grab for the brakes but be careful <laughs> There's not a lot of roots or things like that to contend with, but there is a lot of really loose rock all along the trail, so you've got to be very careful about touching your brakes. I, of course, hit my brakes and had a slide out crash, but I wasn't hurt, so it was all good. Crash? But not bad. Um, this looks so much easier on the videos. Oh, so much later. It's definitely a trail for more experienced riders. Obviously, experienced riders will blast down it and flow down it really well, but I did find it really quite difficult. But I did have a huge amount of fun on it. I was not let down by it. I'd seen the videos. It looked fantastic, and even though I didn't ride it the best, I still really, really enjoyed it. It's a really well laid out trail. It's funny, I feel like Berm Baby Berm and Flat White are related somehow. It's like Flat White is Berm Baby Berm's fierce big brother. They both are very flowing, but Flat White's temperament is just far more difficult. <laughs> Fantastic trail in a fantastic location at the golf field. If you're in the area, definitely check it out. You won't be disappointed. I really like that. Just pipped at the post from the top spot at number two, it's a river runs through it at Pit Midden Forest. The reason why I love river runs through it is it's unique. It feels like several trails rolled into one. It's a red graded trail and has lots of interesting features. Yeah. It starts off with a routy off camber rolling where there's a couple of line choices about which way you want to go into it. Then it moves out into a more open area through the woods with a drop and you can build up a lot of speed there. Then you come to the bridge, which goes over the river, which gives the trail its name. Then you come to a really fantastic feature, a bomb hole, which feels like a bit of a roller coaster. And you come out of that through an archway of trees, a tight right hand turn, and then on the left hand side there's a big ditch, so don't go too fast there. And quite often this area is wet, so it can be quite slippery, so be careful. Oh, you're on. The next section is, feels like you're going through a tunnel of tightly packed trees on either side and the trail itself really undulating like rollers. Then it opens up into a very rooty stretch. Now this area is usually quite wet and the roots are treacherously slippy. I've seen quite a few people crash on this section. Went the right way that time. Then you cut round onto the final stretch which you can pedal fast, you can pump your bike, weave in and amongst trees till you get to the finish line. It is a fantastic trail, really fast and flowing. This video that I'm showing you now is the only time I've been on it when it's been dry. Every other time I've been there it's been quite wet, which does make it a lot more difficult. It is a red graded trail, it's not more difficult than red, but it certainly does have quite a few features that can catch out a lot of wet slippy routes but it is so much fun i absolutely love it check out if you're in the area <sighs> what a trail It's pretty steep. <laughs> and the winner, taking the number one spot, is Rake and Ruin 
on Burnham Hill at Dunkeld. There's a very steep shoot running. Dunkeld really is an area of outstanding natural beauty. The views from the top of Burnham Hill are absolutely breathtaking. Really, really stunning scenery. Getting loose. Rake and Ruin itself is a red graded trail, although it's a trail that I believe, depending on what the weather conditions would be bordering on black, it is quite difficult in some parts. Rake and Ruin starts off with a very steep rocky slab into a tight left hand turn, then down another steep chute over some really big roots. Then you come into a section which is full of loose rock which really reminded me of flat white, a section where you really want to be careful about touching your brakes. Then you come on to a section which is fairly straight but is dropping all the time. There's some fairly substantial step downs that are almost drops but you can roll them all. Throughout the trail there are sections which are really quite long and straight which is great fun just to let go of the brakes and blast down. Some of these streets do have quite a lot of big chunky rocks on them though, so it's not that easy. About halfway along the trail you come to the main feature that gives its name. There's a ruined croft house. It's been a, <coughs> a croft or something. That's pretty cool. Look at that on the side of many trails. Which is fantastic. It's just an amazing feature to have on the side of the trail. But all around that area there's lots of slate and loose smashed up rocks, which does make it a bit tricky, especially in turning. This trail really likes to mix it up a bit. There's some really big wide sweeping bends, but with big drops at the side of them. Easy, 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 easy. And then there are other really tight hairpin bends with loose rock in them, which makes it really pretty tricky to manoeuvre around. I believe continues around here. Yes. Just when you think the trail is finished, it continues through some woods, which is pretty rooty, quite tight and weaving, and off camber in parts. So then you think that's it done, but oh no, it's not finished yet. Oh, it continue? It continues again. Whoa! Sketchy! Rake and Ruin is an excellent trail with the perfect balance of technical difficulty and flow. So much fun! Just my kind of trail. Absolutely brilliant. You've got to check it out. What a trail! Let me know if you've done them, what you think of them, and also tell me what your favourite trails are. And if you've got any suggestions for me, I'd love to hear about them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Tatty bye. Happy shredding.